from Gamble Pavilion in stores. Number 11, UConn welcomes in St. John's. These are two of the three best in the Big East. UConn unblemished, 10-0 in league play. And welcome down to the floor alongside the former Maris standout in Julianne Viani Brain. I'm John Sadak and Julianne. It was a blowout when these teams last met this year, but when they last met in Connecticut, the biggest upset in over a decade for St. John's took down the Huskies. St. John's has been known to really shock UConn, that's for sure, and they did it last year. They also did it back in 2012 to break UConn's 99 game winning streak. So you better believe that Gino Ariama has not forgotten that. Time now for our AT&T Fast Analysis. What do you see in the Husky offense? Well, you look at Paige Beckers, and this season she's taken on a bit of a new role. She shifted into a point forward position, which has given teams a lot of matchup problems. It's really helped facilitate their offense. She can do it all. She gets a lot of people involved. And then over on St. John's side, it's really all about unique Drake. She has surpassed all expectations for this team. No player has as much pressure on a team to score than her her and she has done that so consistently night in and night out the spotlight shines down in the nutmeg state over 10,000 expected a sellout crowd will lightning strike twice for the red storm and get a big road win or do the huskies continue to bulldoze the big east The late great K. Yao, head coach NC State, 1975 to 2009, a Naismith Hall of Famer, diagnosed with breast cancer in 1987, more than two decades on again, off again, public battle with the disease. Her hope, inspire others. Make a difference in a fight that impacts each and every one of us. Joe Tartamella now in his 12th year as the St. John's head man, the reigning Big East coach of the year. He's 1-10 all time against UConn. The lineups look out for St. John's Jillian Archer, second leading scorer, leading rebounder, also their best shot blocker. Aliyah Edwards, almost 69% from the field in this building for UConn. And Gino Oriema now in his 39th season. He'll turn 70 next month, the nine-time AP Coach of the Year, just two wins shy of 1,200 in his Hall of Fame career. It's the first time that St. John's Jules has donned pink in five years. Wow, that is a long time. You know, the, the players were really excited about that, by the way. <laughs> they want to keep those jerseys in the worst way. Well, UConn wins the tap as we are underway. Paige Beckers averaging 20 a game. Nika Mule who had a bounce back after foul trouble against Notre Dame. Beckers misfire, tipped and controlled by St. John's and Bernaya Mayo. Mayo tries to attack, slithering toward the paint, lost out of bounds. And John, super important early here for St. John's to not allow UConn to get a, a flurry of shots from the perimeter to start this game. That happened the last time they faced them, and they could never dig out of that hole. And a lot of those came in transition. Mayo defended by Beckers, lobbed to Archer. They've worked her in more heavily of late. And the lane puts it home. That's something Julian Archer has continued to get better at, but you got to get back in transition. KK Arnold. Slam on the brakes, a mini Euro bucket. Yeah, that's what UConn does well, and UConn had 50 fast break points the other day. So they do it in transition. Unique Drake does everything. They go under the screen, jumper off, taps controlled by the Huskies. Jade the lead for Beckers, good funnel forward, Edwards, two transition buckets in a row. Yeah, you see Joe Tartamel over there, you know he's not happy about that. You've got to kind of gauge it in terms of rebounding and then getting back. Into the lane. St. John's doesn't take a lot of threes. Drake is their three-point offense, but right at the cup is Archer. That's a nice job, though. The penetration and pitch game will be there. Elbow J, Shade, five-time Big East Freshman of the Week. How quick, though, John, does UConn get it up the floor? I mean, you blink, and they are already at the other end. Shade's been great through all season. Such scoring versatility. Now Donald look for Drake. Lob opposite, caught by Day. Baseline J, in and out. Nika Mule survey. She's having a career year shooting the basketball. Arnold 
aggressive drive. One and done, the board to Mayo. KK Arnold's got a lot more minutes too this season for UConn. A lot of younger players have gotten minutes with all the injuries. Which has been another storyline for UConn this season, as it was last. Five players done for the year. Drake step back, rejected, taken away by Beckers. Off the screen, wrap around, in stride, and one. Oh, what a play. I tell you, Paige Beckers just makes everybody better. And the way that Edwards has performed all season, this all starts on the defensive end, the length from Beckers. She just irritates offensive players, but she goes all the way to the other end, creates the opportunity here, draws two, and how about that dive from Edwards, knowing exactly where to go? The two of them have really good chemistry. And Edwards has been dominant throughout the season, especially in Big East play, just all over the floor for this team. And, and her ability to finish lately has been key. And St. John's respond with a bucket. Drake, the extra pass, corner triple. Off for Donald, who had the foul at the other end. Grazed by UConn, and St. John's ball 12 to shoot. When St. John's is going well, what are they doing? Well, I think when St. John's is doing well, they're obviously keeping the game low scoring, and that's what they've been doing throughout the season. They really defend first. They don't have a whole lot of offense, so they cannot really make a lot of mistakes, but they're making shots from the perimeter. That's what they do well when they win, and Donald is one of those players we saw just miss. If she can get hot, that can help them. Snaps Twine. She led the team with 11 in the first matchup between these squads on the year. I also think St. John's looks out their best when they're moving the ball a lot and they're limiting mistakes. Off the up fake, Becker swish. St. John's has not been able to run the way that they have in past years because they're also pretty slim. Just They pretty much go seven deep. Mayo. Over the screen, fall away, got it. Nice job, and that's a really good effort using the screen. Mule snaps it off to Beckers. Edwards, good fake, showing the footwork. St. John's ball. Drake thought about the transition triple. Mule closed her down. That was a huge matchup the first time these teams met as Mule contained Drake. She only allowed her to shoot three shots, and that just can't happen for St. John's to be successful. They've got to find her ways to get available shots tonight. Jayla Donald, eight on the timer. Picks it up, needs help. Mayo hoist. She might have got rushed by the crowd. Yeah, she had a little more time. The advantage of playing at home. Mule could feel Becker's cutting. And the soaring rebound to Archer. And Joe Tortomella had high praise for Jillian Archer, transferred in from Georgetown. Said that most games she should be a double-double. Counted her athleticism, her smarts. Said that they're a different team where they can get her touches. You know, and she was always a very capable back-to-the-basket player. They didn't see it as much last year with all the talent they had. They've seen it a lot this season. Four to shoot, Drake. Overplay by Mule for a steal, and rattles in and out. Rebound to Shade. Picks it up, can't quite thread the needle. Reset to KK Arnold. On the aggressive clap, Beckers beckons the ball. Gino Oriema told us he wants Beckers to be more aggressive. Edwards misses. Loose ball tip controlled by St. John's. What does he mean by that? Yeah, I mean, he wants her to just be looking to score first, not just pass first. Now, it's good that she incorporates her teammates, but he wants her to really have her foot on the gas and to force people to have to guard her in such a way where she's got to give it up to her teammates because of the aggressiveness of her play. Edwards strip, Euro down the lane, blocking foul. We'll step aside. The Huskies have been off the board for a bit. St. John's hanging within a bucket. Last year, the last time St. John's played at UConn, a huge upset of the number four Huskies. The biggest ranked win for St. John's in over a decade. 
Daniel Patterson had 20 points. That game was in Hartford at the Excel Center, and a shocker that propelled the Red Storm into the NCAA tournament. That was the win they needed. That came in later February. Shanika Smith, now on the sidelines as an assistant, was a big part of the prior upset at UConn. That was back in February of 2012. She hit a three, a design play by Kim barnes Arico. That was the difference in a one-point final. It came with eight seconds left in the game. Entering that contest, UConn had won 99 in a row in this building. They had 99 balloons ready to go up as they were preparing to make it 100 straight. When we brought that game up to Gino Oriema, he immediately remembered the play and said, she didn't hit that many threes that year. I looked it up. That was one of eight she hit the entire year. That was one of the defining moments of her playing career. Yeah, it's incredible game that was. He'll never forget it. Talk about upsetting the, the season, breaking that 100th game streak here at, you know, in Connecticut. But that is what Joe Tarmella's squads, and even right before he took over the head coaching job, he was coaching under Kim Barnes Rico at that time. So he's been around 21 years. So. He's seen some upsets happen. First pressure of the day for UConn after the free throw makes. Foul went to Archer, who holds the ball. Her first. St. John somewhat awkwardly, but does break the pressure, and Archer gets a bucket. That's a great pass. Good look from Day. And so far, St. John has been able to hang offensively with UConn. They're playing with a sense of poise here. They've given up too many transition buckets, but pretty good. Becker's on the cut, good up fake. First field goal make for UConn in about three minutes. But if you can limit UConn into the half court game, that is gonna benefit you as a team. They're gonna try to play a lot of, a lot faster. That's how they play. And fast break points right now are Huskies nine zip. Everything delivered for St. John's, including Drake, go for three. Day releases off target, weak side, good boxing board for Edwards. Mule. A no look to Beckers out of bounds. And St. John's doing a nice job here. Tara Day getting to the rim. She also had that shot, but an even better pass down low. A nice little bouncer and underutilized bounce pass. I, I love the assertiveness here, but Day has really been tremendous. Probably their most improved player since the start of the season. She started out at DePaul. Not really a DePaul type player, she's more of a penetrator type of player. DePaul tends out a lot of shooters, but she's been really good in this program. Good exploded in December. Sky Owen is subbed in. She lurks right corner wearing number four. Day slams on the brakes, creates some space, gets it to go. Yeah, that's the assertiveness that you need to get to the rim. This is a team that Joe Tarnamella told us they have to manufacture points, sometimes getting the line, so they're just penetrating. Oh, what a Becker saw Mule before she even darted to the rim. Talk about the vision, right, of Beckert's. Owen the lead for Day. It's getting bodied by Arnold. She's been physical on defense. Donald kick. Owen three to shoot. Great, bit of a prayer fouled in the act of a three, and that's going to go on Mule. That's certainly one you don't want to do. And that's her second, and Mule's, or it's not her second, excuse me, but she, she barely gets her, but the closeout was there. And but they're calling this a, a two-shot foul. Two-shot foul. But it looked like she was behind the arc. So two officials had two fingers up, and it looked like she was clearly behind the arc. Joe Tardinella striding out, hand in his pocket with his other hand raised, saying, hey, how was she not shooting three? She's behind from what we just saw. They, they can take a look at this. And we have a strong officiating crew today. Ed Selaski, Mark Resch, each have worked second weekend, Sweet 16. Adrian Gilmore on the crew as well. And we do get confirmation they're going to check now to, to make sure. And I think this will be three shots. And even more than the three points this could bring, Jules, that's a huge foul on Mule, who battled major foul trouble and was not a factor in their lopsided loss to Notre Dame a couple of games ago. Right. They need Mule in the game. And the best way to get her out of the game, clearly, is to get her in foul trouble. And, you know, she is one of their better defenders, so she tends to have to 
match up with a unique Drake and a player of high caliber. But you see here, I, I don't think there's much of a touch, but she gets her a little bit. I guess they think on the wrist right but there. She's definitively yep. behind the arm. Oh yeah, for sure. That's a three. Yep, and he's raising his hands. And that was a prayer shot with one of the timer. She was rushed into a bad look. Yeah, that was definitely. It, it's unfortunate if you're the one defending that because it's you gotta let it go most of the time. That's just a shot that's you gotta make them make it. But a big maybe swing of events here for St. John's. Drake, a 79% free throw shooter, looking for her first point of the day, and she gets it. She averages 18 and a half a game. That's third most in the Big East. Last year was the Big East sixth woman of the year, but now she is the offense. Only Lucy Olson of Villanova has more field goal attempts in the Big East. And the thing with Unique Drake is they've really stressed with her quality over quantity and she's been very efficient in what she's been able to do offensively given every game she is smothered mm, UConn runs offense constant cutting off ball Beckers had it knocked free got bumped and fouled this will go on Mayo is her first This UConn team is so electric at home. The last 10 years at home, 133 wins, six losses. That's best in Division I. Edwards. She's been carving up the inside early. She has been. I mean, she's been terrific throughout the season, but she's been a force. We haven't seen the major UConn pressure yet. Great screen. Wide open three. Mayo. Banker no. Edwards rips it down. Mule, Beckers, Swish. Uh, Gino said the reason why they're in a better position this season at this time of year is because of that young woman right there, Paige Beckers. They had injuries last year and they have them this year, but they're not quite as worn down as they were last year, and they have Paige Beckers. Owen the bounce. Owen Banker. She'll take it. She was one for her last 17 from three entering today. That's tapped out of bounds by St. John's. And UConn just so good at moving the basketball. When Aaliyah Edwards gets it that deep in the lane, there is no stopping her. You've got to push her out and be physical. And then Paige Becker's the best mid-range shooter in the nation, perhaps, is automatic at that point. Edwards, bully move inside. Offensive foul. Could that have been sold a little bit there? Yeah, Gino thinks so. Thinks it was sold. But she did catch it outside the restricted line, so that's the only shot you have at getting the blocking call if you are defending her. Now, St. John's within four. The last time they met, it was UConn in dominant fashion, 92-49. The best shooting day for the Huskies in four years. They were 64% on the game as a team from the field. Several of the St. John's players were also coming off sickness. So I think they're a little more healthy here today. Eight to shoot. Owen. Elbow J. Altered by Beckers. Edwards got it. Timer off. What do you want to see here? I want to see a good ball movement here. I think Paige Beckers wound up taking the last shot or getting it to Edwards. Take it away. Two seconds. Great. Red light. And we are through the opening quarter of play. St. John's hanging with the Huskies. It's college basketball on CBS Sports Network. 21-17. Fairly tight through one quarter. The Huskies, though, getting it down to the fast break. Yeah, this is what they do well. It's 11-0 in fast break points for Connecticut, and this is just what they do. You get the rebound, and you better look to run, and it's been several players getting the assist, and the defense here from Beckers leading to some offense, and just a really good ball movement early offensively with Edwards and Beckers and the whole slew of them. That's how they can really kill you, but what is impressive to me is been St. John's ability to limit UConn's shooting from three-point range. They've only taken one three so far. They, they didn't allow them to really get off in the flurries 
that first quarter. That's important because you can really pull away when they get behind that three ball. And a foul trying to carve up space. It'll go on Phoenix Gideon. Was UConn showing a different defense there? Yeah, that's one thing that Gino told us he would be doing a little bit. Well, he has done a little, is they do throw in some zone here and there. He's not a zone guy, though. But mainly man-to-man, -man, sometimes double-team action. Arnold had it knocked down. Now ripped away and send it the other way with a whistle. Now looking for the loose ball. It'll be... A foul on K.K. Arnold is her first. Now we've seen limited pressure from UConn. They may show some shades of it here. Got a trappy lying in wait. Now, at the start of the season, Coach Oriama said they started out with a ton of pressure. Three-quarter court, full-court pressure. That's how they wanted to play. Swish! Three ball from Jayla Donald. Wow, what a start here for the Red Storm. And that's what Donald does well. This team is different when she can stretch the floor, John. Mule, given the window, doesn't take the shot. Lob to Edwards. She has been money. She's got 11. I think they've seen, UConn has seen this is a mismatch. I think they're going to continue to pound it into Aaliyah Edwards because nobody can really guard her. And you don't want players to get foul trouble if you're St. John. So you know they're going to allow her to a degree to bump around down there. Air ball, Drake, caught by Beckers, and a quick whistle on Donald. That's going to be her second foul. But this is a good job from St. John's with the kick out, and Donald just sets herself up. Nice footwork. When she hits from three, it changes this team. It changes the dynamic. She is really incapable of doing that. And in a game where she can hit two threes, it's a big deal because that's where the floor spacing for them comes into play. But now she's got two fouls, so she had to go to the bench. Joe Tardinella is pointing to his head saying, what are you thinking getting a foul in that spot? Right, we, can, we need you on the floor. Right back to Edwards. She has been dominant blocking foul. Chance for an and one. And that's going to be two on Archer. And they're a very thin team that doesn't foul much, and they have two players in foul trouble. Right, and that's because of Aaliyah Edwards and how dominant she is as a force in the paint. She's got a true back-to-the-basket physique, and her moves have been terrific. You know, you might want to consider diving down and, and digging in when she catches the basketball to help out Jillian Archer. She's had a hard time playing her full behind here. So and a now, lot of people do. <laughs> now it's Tara Day and Phoenix Gideon who are getting those minutes. And one free throw is a miss, one by St. John's. Remember, it was a one-point game, and then in rapid fire, two critical players for St. John's, their second fouls. Joe Tardamel told us that today, Tudor. He cannot get in foul trouble. Becker steal. Extra pass, Mule didn't take it. Beckers gets a piece on so many passes. Contested. One by St. John's. And a travel on Gideon. The presence and size of Edwards flushed her and the giveaway that gives UConn the possession. That's where Gideon needs to get rid of the ball immediately. Don't fiddle around with it. Beckers. Fouled, and they're piling up in a hurry. That's the first on day. First foul on Becker's already six, two, and three. She averages 20 points per. She's been incredibly efficient this year. Tonight, 8 Eastern, don't miss the toughest eight seconds in all of sports. The best bucking bull riders on the planet take their talent to Sacramento. Watch PBR Unleash the Beast here on CBS Sports Network. Well, Becker's cans them both. And Gino Ariema really being cognizant of her and her minutes to this season. He's really managed her very well at this point. This feels like this could be a critical swing moment in this game. Yeah, oh. St. John's doesn't want to let this get away from him here. Mayo probing dribble, rejected by Edwards. 
But Bernaya Mayo's got the ability to get to the rim. She's got to be assertive. It is hard when you go up against Edwards, though. You've got to have that pull-up range game available to stop and pop. At some point to beat UConn, you've got to make shots. Yeah, the, best, the best teams in the nation that hang with them can score with them. Shot clock violation. It was a one-point game. It turned into a three-possession game in a minute. Becker's looking high post. Oh, one-handed flick. Edwards had cut. Drake on the push. Going at Mule, and that's a foul, and that's number two on Nika Mule. Uh, she's going to probably have to come out now. Unless Coach Oriama trusts Mule, which I know he does, but it's risky, and I think he's going to go to the bench, most likely. Yep. You know, and, and that's what you've got to do. You've got to manufacture points. You've got to get people in foul trouble as much as you can. She's kind of the head of the snake in some ways. I mean, I know Paige Beckers is technically, and you know, but Mule really does it defensively, and she's a four general as well. Free throw miss for Drake, so Mule to the bench. Ice Brady takes her spot. Top five recruit, class of 22. Did not play last year with a dislocated patella. Has not produced very well the last three games, but does give another edge of size to this UConn team. She had 17 points against St. John's in that first meeting. Her best season, her best game of the season. A little bit slower to get her going off that injury. Beckers had it knocked away. That was poked by Owen. Mayo kick. Drake for three. Little flat, Edwards wins it. Shade was looking for the ball up the sideline. Inside! Ice Brady. I don't think Ice thought that was in, but <laughs> that was a terrific pass. Owen on the pound, looks to the bench. Play call given by Joe Tartamella. He was the Big East Coach of the Year last season. Hardware cemented by not just their turnaround, but getting back to the big dance. And the win at UConn, a huge part of it. Owen miss. Edwards ill-advised, and it goes off the foot of Tara Day. And this is all in the transition game, John. This is where UConn just kills teams. You get it up the floor, and you're able to get it where you want it. K.K. Arnold there controlling the tempo. A nice little dish down low to Ice Brady in the finish. And Ice Brady has a lot of potential, still maturing, but has that skill set that you need, that big, able body down low. Edwards picks it up. Beckers behind the screen. Got it. Deadly right there. That, that could be a separator with that shot. St. John's needed to get a stop there. Unique Drake, a critical part of the St. John's offense. Right now, three points, 0 for 6 from the field. They're doing exactly what they did in the playbook last time. Timeout called by St. John's. But Paige Beckers is continuing to extend this lead with her ability to make shots. That's what she does well, and she's so good off the bounce. Her mid-range game does not lie. As UConn takes the 10-point lead. Coming up, AT&T at the half, Brent Stover, Jay Wright, Seth Davis, UConn legend Renee Montgomery gets you caught up in the latest and greatest around the world of college hoops. AT&T at the half, Renee Montgomery in that studio 15 years ago. She led undefeated UConn to a win against St. John's, was one of three double figures in that game. Maya Moore, Tina Charles as well. That was the first of back-to-back 39-0 seasons for the Huskies. Today, it's been about Aliyah Edwards. Aliyah Edwards has really dominated in the paint. There is no one on St. John's that's able to stop her, not only offensively, but defensively. She's getting touches and blocks, but what strikes me about her the most about her game is her competitiveness. She has just this competitive way about her. She rebounds, she runs the floor so hard, and she just competes for everything, and that's what you're seeing here today. I mean, Gino Oriema told us Really what's next for her game is just to increase her range a little bit. That mid-range game, when she can knock that down consistently, boy, 
She's going to be even that much better, and, and she's doing it from time to time. Critical turnover for Drake and St. John's. That was out of a St. John's timeout. It's a 10-1 UConn run. It's a 13-1 UConn run. And that's where if you don't stop the bleeding, it just can really swell quickly. And they have not been able, St. John's has not been able to get a stop. That's been the problem. Of course, the foul trouble. St. John's has not hit a field goal in four minutes. Seven to shoot for Mayo. Kick out of the wing. Three ball miss for Day. Out of bounds is St. John's ball. Well, that's where St. John's all year has kept games low scoring, the ones that they've won. I mean, you think about it, they're third in the Big East. I mean, what Joe Tarnamell has done with this squad has been pretty incredible. In the second straight year, they have begun Big East play 8-3. and three. Had it done that back-to-back -back years in four decades. Three ball with a foul. That comes off ball. Count the three. And a wrestling match emerging in the mid post. Yeah, a little physicality. I mean, you've got to be able to be physical with the Huskies a bit. There's some pushing down low, and like they might be looking at this. Trying to see if that's a hook and hold, I think. Yeah, yeah. With Ice Brady locking up with Phoenix Gideon. Gideon came up clutching at her back. So we do get confirmation. Shot good. And I... They are looking at the foul off ball, and I have to think you're exactly right. Does it get escalated? What do you think? Does it merit escalation? Yeah, I think maybe. I mean, she definitely was hooking her a bit in that whole possession. Now, right there, you see this. It's frustration because Gideon is posting up, but you can't really hook and hold, like you mentioned, in the arm. It might get escalated here, John. No, a common foul, as it's called. Would it get bumped up? Remember that Brady was pressed into greater play because Nika Mule picked up her second foul at the seven-minute mark this quarter. It was the foul concern for St. John's that seemingly was the beginning of this UConn surge. Right around the time that Archer and Donald picked up their second fouls, that's as the run began. And you see right here, I think it was also a little bit of a selling factor there for Phoenix Gideon, the transfer from... Robert Morris, very physical. Just rebounder. common foul. And it sounds like they're going to keep it a common foul, John. That's exactly the word that we get. So count the bucket and a common foul. We get word from Adrian Gilmore and the crew. So that means St. John's has the ball. So this could be a big swing. Because you get the three and now you got possession. Yeah, definitely a big swing here. Drake. Who hasn't quite seemed comfortable in this game. Now we saw UConn at shoot around. Just everything they talked about was, you know, you got to limit Drake. I mean, everybody who game plans against St. John's has that mindset. Mayo loses handle out of bounds. Some, sometimes St. John's not moving the ball quite enough and getting enough touches. And they can get stagnant at times. When UConn went through its situational stuff, the, the scout of St. John's, the player who simulated Drake wore a bright pink distinct jersey, and her name was brought up constantly. Remember, this is number one. Remember, this is Drake. Yeah, and Coach Tartamella thought, well, maybe the second time around, since she didn't have a good game, the last time they faced each other, maybe they would let up a little. Well, you're seeing UConn is not letting up a little against her this time around either. Just three points today, and she's got a couple fouls here. That was the second foul on Tara Day. Excuse me, on Tara Day. So Day goes to the bench. So Day's got two, Archer's got two, Donald's got two. And they only play a seven-player rotation in most games. All right, so it really forces Joe Tardamella to have to play his players even when he maybe doesn't want to because he wants to sit them, but they just don't go deep. And so Donald is on the floor. She's on the low right block wearing number five. Remember, she had a couple of made triples that were a huge part of St. John's exchanging blows with UConn early.
Sky Owen. Defended by Shade. Feed the screener a little off. You caught him a run. Arnold Edwards. And that's one thing against UConn. If you turn it over, you're going to expect a track beat. UConn gets the rebound, and they're going to run. So if you don't rebound, if you don't secure that ball, you better be back. Day to the table to sub in with two. Aggressive drive, and Mayo shot. She's fouled. And missed shots means you've got to be available for a rebound, and also... When you turn the ball over, a live ball turnover is a problem when you play the Huskies. They really make you pay. And Aaliyah Edwards is so incredible to me. At her size, at 6'3", she just runs the floor like she's 5'3". I mean, she's quick. Already a 17 points, does Edwards. She averages 17. Her career high, 28. She's well on that path at this current pace. Big time. And she's having one of those games. I mean, it's tough to have the numbers she had last year. She had an incredible season, but she's been just so solid all year. Well, free throw make now. Let's see what the Huskies, three minutes before the break. They've hit their last four from the floor. They have gotten hot. Shade, a little short. Volleyball to Owen. Drake steps into it. It's heel, and Edwards got it. And Drake's getting some looks, just not able to finish. Beckers has it stripped on the way up. Great defense. Mayo, bothered by the big, gives it away. And that's the presence of Edwards you're talking about at the other end. Yeah, Phoenix Gideon having a hard time catching the ball. The last couple possessions, she's bobbled those passes. Again taken away, Owen. With Arnold on the trail, layup. Sky Owen, so quick. Tough New York player. She has so much potential for this team as she continues to get better. Brady. The reluctant dribble needs some help. Beckers. Ten to shoot. Little movement off ball. Another on ball steal. Mayo right at Beckers. That'll be a second foul on Beckers. Yeah, Joe Tardamella told us Bernaya Mayo is an X factor for this team. She's really got to be the head of the dragon today, he told us about her. This is a good job just getting hands in there, not fouling, being smart about it. Gets up in transition. Gets a chance to get to the free throw line, but she was a successful player at UMass, and she was there for three years, and she learned how to really be a winner, go to the NCAA tournament. She scored in double figures the last seven straight games. So you see Beckers to the bench, but it's Mule back in. So Beckers with two fouls on the pine, Mule with two fouls her first time in over five minutes of game action. Yeah, remember, Connecticut doesn't go super deep either, so they'll be out a little now, Ken. St. John's take advantage of this these last two minutes here or so. And you wonder if we may see offense defense switches on dead balls. And this allows Mule to get some rhythm. Brady, long jumper miss, rebound St. John's and Giddy. It's single digits, and it feels like it shouldn't be. Now, if you're St. John's, you're pretty happy with this right now. They didn't let it get away from them. Owen leave for Mayo. Tippy towing, able to save it to Archer, who's playing with a couple of fouls. Mayo wide open. Misfire. Brady is it not free? Owen shovel. Archer off. And Mule tracks it down. Drake lost her sneaker. It's a five on four. Edwards bucket. Uh, that's a possession where you wish you could get back here. St. John's it needed to finish that layup. And UConn makes you pay. Under a minute. That last bucket for Edwards broke the threshold of 1,600 career points. She has passed swing cash on the all-time list today. She's stayed healthy and played a lot of minutes. Mule steal. Timer off. And there's a smart, savvy player. Brady Bucket. 
excellent job by Nika Mule. You said it. Poised, kept her composure, waited for her teammates to get back, and made the right pass. The and games. I don't see Blue anywhere in the building. No. <laughs> Long two. Untrue. Edwards, three seconds. Mule tried to snap it forward. Arnold couldn't get it off, but she's fouled. Oh, how did that happen? I don't think the shot came before zeros were on the clock. But the whistle comes. Wow, Joe Tarnavella. It's it's a red light. Yeah, it's a red light. That wasn't even good. They'll look this over. I shouldn't have even counted. No zeros on the clock. The call on the floor is a foul in the act of a three. That would be a huge swing. But it seemed very clearly that she wasn't even into the act of the shot, let alone getting fouled. Way after it's, the shot. The, game, the, the half is over. The red right. light's on. Yeah, that was a mistake uh, there by the referee. So they're they're checking exactly that to see if the foul happened before the horn and and clearly I would, we can see that yes. it, it yeah. <laughs> so I th the score that's on the board would hold and we would have no shots. But to me, the bigger story about the close of this half is how efficient UConn relatively became, hitting six of its last eight from the field, outscoring St. John's 21 to 12 in the quarter. If not for St. John's on-ball steals, this would be way uglier. Right. And we get the, the wave off officially. The shot did come later. So we are through the first half. It is 42-29. UConn leads St. John's. You're watching women's college basketball on CBS Sports Network. The play for K game from Storrs, Connecticut. The 11th ranked Huskies with the lopsided lead. AT&T at the half, but we're back. Back in Storrs, 42-29. UConn the lead on St. John's. John Sadak, Julianne Biani Brain, and our CBS Sports Network crew. Julianne, what did you see in the first half? Well, I think we saw a lot of what we like about UConn in terms of their ability to really run the floor and get out and transition. They had 19 fast break points in that first half. And what's interesting to me is they only took two threes. And that was mind blowing because this is a team that can really get out and torture you with their three ball. And yet, look at the score. They still have a very significant cushion to start the second half, but give some credit to St. John's. They hung around. They didn't allow this to totally break away. Our AT&T game summary, including those points from Edwards, she had 19 and eight. She was incredible. I mean, she's on par, John, for a 40-point effort, but she was all over the floor, defending at a high level, but running the floor like a deer. And the way that she's able to get into the paint and really use her body and her physicality to command the basketball. I think we saw early in this game that Connecticut knew there was a matchup problem with Aaliyah Edwards and they really pounded the basketball to her. And listen, she finishes shots and all of UConn shots in the first half were layups. They had so many layups that were pretty uncontested and Edwards was just finishing, running the floor, but a lot of it came from just being able to push the tempo. Edwards hits almost 70% of her overall shots from the floor in home games this year. Well, she's good here. I mean, she loves her home cooking. Becker's on high. Three ball, Huskies. Now, I think Gino Aramo is probably displeased with a, a couple of the cheap turnovers near the end of the first half. St. John was able to stick around, forcing some turnovers on ball defense and getting out in some transition buckets. This is the second made three for the Huskies. Archer, who battled foul trouble in the first. Twisting shot, one weak side by Mule. The follow forward to Shea, transition two, off iron, rebound, Red Storm and Day. But Bernaya's Mayo, Bernaya Mayo's ability off the bounce was part of St. John's offensive success. Yeah, I really think that she's got to continue to do some things with her dribbling skills and create for herself and for others in the second half here. They are denying the post hard. Day hopping out of the block, up and in. That's nice patience there. And if St. John's has to continue to hang around here. K.K. Arnold. 
foul off balls. Edwards was battling against Mayo. It'll be Mayo's set. Paige Beckers comes out here. Nice job setting her feet and stroking that three ball. I just said, UConn only took two threes in the first half and right out of the gate. Paige knocks one down. Edwards draws the foul. That's going to be three on Archer. That's been a problem here today. Archer has been their anchor on defense all season long, and they've gotten her in foul trouble. It was at the 827 mark of the second quarter she got her second. It's at the 827 mark of the third quarter she's got her third. Edwards has 20 points. It's three in a row with 20 or more, eight times on her outstanding season. Now, Gino Oriema, when he talked about her effort last year, pointed out that he thought her February might have cost her overall All-American status. She wound up a third-team All-American. She had a very good year, but thought that February struggles knocked that down a bit as you see the foul issue on each side. Archer's three lead the way. I think that's probably true. I mean, she really struggled in February. But came back in March to do what she usually does. Day got bumped, tried to play ground. I think, too, to your point, John, last year, I think at this point in the season, the team was a little more beaten down yeah. with injuries. And, and I also think that's a motivational tactic, right? Yeah. I mean, point that out and try to get the most out of the player. Big time. Arnold, nice look, Edwards, rhythm. So that's the area of her game. Gina Ariema says as she keeps stretching out, making shots from there, boy, deadly. Timeout St. John's facing its biggest deficit of the day. The Huskies ignite the second in strong fashion. Forty-nine thirty-one. UConn the gaudy lead on St. John's. In our celebration of Black History Month, we recognize a pair of pioneers for St. John's. Louise Smiley McRae, the first ever African American female student athlete to receive a scholarship at St. John's. We also recognize the late Carmen Cheese Fletcher, the first Puerto Rican black player to be drafted and play professionally in the Women's Basketball League. Fletcher passed away last summer. Some of the groundbreaking women as part of this proud St. John's program. That is clad in pink today as they play for K but they are facing their biggest deficit of the game. This is out of a St. John's timeout. The other timeout called to the first half saw a turnover quickly. Yeah, third quarters for teams can be really difficult against Connecticut. They, team, they tend to come out with a lot of momentum out of half times. And right here, St. John's has to find some offense. Unique Drake still 0 of 7. Donald travel. So now twice out of a St. John's timeout, they've given it away. Yeah, you cannot turn the ball over against UConn. It's just giving possessions to them and opportunities which they don't need help with. And UConn has shared the ball splendidly. 16 assists on 19 made buckets. Yeah, that's, that's got to be nearing one of their best so far of the year. I mean, they've just been making a lot of shots and facilitating well. Mule. Mule's got seven assists. A little short. Won by St. John's. Drake going right at Mule. Kick. Rhythm three for Donald. No. And we saw Donald release that. Just it wasn't going in. She wasn't quite ready. I think some of the players for St. John's not playing like they're ready. Or maybe a little timid. It's a younger team. Open shade, in and out. Beckers hammered, looking for the loose ball. It, it does feel like there's a sense of confidence that is requisite, particularly playing UConn in Connecticut. Yeah, for sure. And when, when UConn is here, I mean, they are just so confident as Page goes down here with the foul. The teams can 
it's tough to come in this building. And it's a really cool environment. I mean, Joe Tartamello was telling us the last time they were here was during COVID when nobody was here. It's been a long time, really. He used to work Gino Oriana's camps at UConn as a kid. Right down the floor, Day puts it on. Yeah, and it's amazing how far he's come, right? Now he's a head coach in the Big East against him. Edwards had herself a day. 25. And she's wide open, and there's nobody that can match up with Edwards here. And a blocking foul, KK Arnold with her second. Gina Oriema thought some space might have been created. She's in a bit of a push. Archer back in, she'll take the spot of Gideon. How does St. John's cut into this deficit? I think you just take it in increments, John. One, two minute increments. You've got to win possessions. And they just haven't been able to score in a consistent manner where we see one go in right there. I mean, it starts with, of course, a made shot, but you need to string together a couple make shots and then a couple of possessions where you're stopping UConn. But that comes with just being assertive. I just don't know that St. John's has enough firepower offensively to be able to crawl out of this right here. That's going to go on Mule, so she's got three fouls. What do you do? I think you take Mule out here with three fouls, and you see Gino's looking over at the bench, and you know, he may leave her in a little bit longer because he trusts her, but it's risky for her to pick up a fourth and a third. You wonder if St. John's attacks her. They should. She's done a really good job defensively. The lob timing is just off. Mule. Becker's right into Edwards. Seal. Miss. Rebound. Loss. But again, you see where Aaliyah Edwards was. She was so deep in the lane, there was no stopping her. They're actually lucky she missed that shot. You've got to be physical with her and push her out of the restricted area. It's going to be a third on KK Arnold now. She's picked up two in about a minute of game time. So Arnold plays with three, Mule plays with three. Drake hasn't really got touches. She's being defended by Beckers here. Gets past her. Of course, wraparound, Arnold couldn't handle, out of bounds. St. John's ball. They're switching. There's various people covering you need Drake. We'll step aside, 51-35, Huskies. 51-35, UConn, the gaudy lead on St. John's. Let's revisit our AT&T past analysis. What have you been seeing? Uh, we saw Paige Beckers getting it done in the way that we love to see her get it done. Getting looks to Leah Edwards, who was tremendous. Nika Mule, I, I like the passing. We talked about St. John's and their ability to get things done offensively, but it hasn't been easy for them because UConn has been all over them. And that's what's enabled them to run. They've been able to get turnovers and then get out in transition. They have 19 fast break points here. And that's been a key and a lot of assists. This is a team that has really shared the ball. Unique Drake, third leading scorer in the Big East. Stymied in the first matchup. Once again, three points only at the line. Yeah. She's 0 for 7 for the field. Jules, she hasn't taken a shot this quarter. No, she hasn't. I mean, she took three shots in their first meeting. They have sweltered her. They've suffocated her. Every single ounce of their game planning was to stop her, to limit her. And they have done just that. They've been neutralizing her. And she's their main offensive threat. We've seen... We've seen what can happen when she can go off with 36 points against the ball. I mean, she's got that ability, but nothing tonight, or today, excuse me. You know, one thing St. John's also hasn't been able to do, which Joe Tartamella told us before the game, they needed to get Leah Edwards in foul trouble. Not, not so today. Arnold off the heel. Mule board and put back. And Mule just right place, right time, always mixing it up. Hasn't scored a lot here today, but she makes her presence known in so many different ways. 
He's defending against Unique Drake. Day, offensive foul. That's her third. Just a simple offensive rebound here, and Nika Mule crashing the glass. She's been so solid in so many ways this season. And you know, going into the year, there were some adjustments that had to take place with this Connecticut team. You know, Paige Beckers came back, and then Mule, remember last year, she was very ball dominant. She always had the ball in her hand. So this year, she had to go off the ball a little bit more, and you have KK Arnold, who also wanted to play point. They figured it out at this point. Arnold off balance draws the foul. Now, last year, Mule shattered Sue Bird's long-time single-season program record for assists. Well, she got used to having the ball in her hands all the time, so she's had to share that load a little bit, but it's really worked out where they're playing with a fluidity. Free throw for Arnold. Uh, UConn brings in Caden Samuels. This is her first minutes. Uh, she hasn't been cleared to sub in just yet. She'll take the spot of Ashlyn Shade. Samuels, one of their other freshmen, and you know, Coach Arama has gotten a chance to play as freshmen this season to give them some much needed game time experience. She's only the second sub of the game, Jules. She, right. she is the seventh different player to play all game, and her entry comes with 3.45 to go in the third. St. John's facing a significant deficit in dire need of buckets. Donald, Mayo Lob, Archer, opposite for Drake, gets a touch. The window closes quickly. Step back three, Donald Heal. And there's the 10th board for Edwards. That's her Big East best 10th double-double. And Donald has to make some of those shots. Oh, what a cut and feed. Beckers hangs with it and it misses. And you can see the visible frustration post-miss for Beckers. Yeah, she's not one to miss too many. Owen, that was off. When you think about Paige Beckers, the ultimate competitor. She has been compared to, Gino has compared her to Diana Taurasi, the likes of her, just with her competitive nature. Now, when she came back off her injury, she really shook that rust off quickly, didn't she? Very much. Unfortunately, has had an injury play career. So has AZ Fudd. They've only played 17 games together. Now, the two of them together would be so dynamic. Edwards! 27 and 10. See, Edwards has that physique, that ability to put the ball on the ground and to get by defenders like, like a guard. I mean, she's just so versatile. Drake stepping back. Banker, her first field goal make of the game. That's her first shot try of the quarter. It's got to give her some confidence. Off the up fake, smooth, Samuels off. Mule weak side, surrounded by pink jerseys. Samuels off, volleyballed by Arnold. Well, the injuries for UConn significant. Five players out for the year, Jules. It's, it's been a pandemic, I, I could say, across the board for UConn. The last couple of seasons, it's been tough. Uh, because in this pattern, you see Ducharme, of course, and then Aubrey Griffin, some of those veteran-type players that you now no longer have. I mean, those are people that certainly could have helped UConn this year. But it has been difficult, to say the least. But it's kind of every person's next up, right? Archer. Edwards. Given the one-on-one. -on -one. from Mayo. St. John just showing some life here. Archer with a nice little step through and the finish. 
and they needed that out of her offensively. And then Mayo, all the way to the rack, drawing the contact. The more that she can use her quickness to her advantage, that can really bother Connecticut. She has that speed. She just has to deliver. It's the and one. UConn has been pretty dominant going back to the later stage second quarter. Yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. You look up and it's low scoring here, and they're sticking with it and taking this thing in increments, and that's all you can do. And UConn's allowing them somewhat to hang around. They've never really put the, put the Jets on to finish them off. This is an 8-0 run by St. John's. Beckers gets it off the Schneid. That's what she does, that mid-range game. Oh, and an ugly entry, and that's out of bounds, and it's UConn ball. Arnold subs back in. They'll go a little smaller. Nope, she'll take the place of Mule. They can maximize some real-time rest for Mule. 53 seconds, end of quarter. Beckers, what a screen. Edwards didn't feel it coming, got tripped. And a jump ball. Arrow goes to St. John's. And that was a possession that really ended up working out for St. John's. That could have been another possession for UConn to get another bucket. And we see the jump ball goes to St. John's here. So now Beckers out, Mule back in. It would seem to defend Drake. Now they're going to maximize Becker's real-time rest. Mayo driving on Samuel was rejected. With a tough angle. Yeah, really tough shot finish. That's what Mayo does. But she'll wow you with some really skilled shots at the rim. St. John's has outscored UConn modestly this quarter by just a skinny point. Arnold trying to change that will go to the line. So Owens got two. Arnold, the preseason Big East Freshman of the Year. UConn has dominated the weekly freshman honors. She's taken it four times on the season. Ashton Shade has won it five times. And is ready to sub back in. Yeah, Arnold's been really good, learning how to slow the game down a little bit. She's a quick player. And she's learned so much from Yule, and you know, I think that she's been taking a lot of her advice as a freshman. Out of bounds, St. John's ball, seven seconds. Samuel's out and Shade in. What's St. John's best shot here? Seven seconds length of the floor. Yeah, well, you see UConn's going to make it hard with the full court press, so you've got to just get what you can get. Get it up half court. Bale floats it up and in. Count it. We're through three, and the deficit back down to 11. Wow, this could not have worked out any better. Bernaya Mayo with the finish at the buzzer. And she came up huge to end that quarter. Third quarter, the first claim by St. John's held UConn to 6 of 18 shooting in the third. We take a look at expert moves brought to you by Principal. Well, overall, Leah Edwards has been the name we've called the most, and she's just been tremendous here. She gets all the way to the rim with a little shot fake and drive. I mean, this is just one of many things she's done throughout this game. 27 points, 10 rebounds. She's got a double-double. This is a season high for Edwards. She has really proven that nobody can stop her. Expect to see them go to her this quarter, like pound it into her. I didn't think they went to her enough in the third quarter. And I think you're going to see it happen again here in the fourth. Because St. John's was able to kind of get back into this one, John. 
But Bernaya Mayo, a critical part of that. She's now the only St. John's player in double figures. She has 15. Seven came in the third quarter alone. And UConn has been sitting at that 19 fast break point number going back to the later stage of the first half. They have not been able to run as much. So, yeah, that's been a key is the transition defense. Becker's three ball. Rainbow miss. Rebound St. John's on the push. Drake looking for a second bucket right at Becker's. Got it. I mean, it's good to see Drake continuing to push, continuing to look for her shot, even though she hasn't made any, and she's made one, but hasn't gotten too many opportunities. Mule quickly to the table. She had been on the bench. Edwards, baseline J. Off iron, rebound Brady. Awkward bounce taken by Drake. Uh, this is a big one here. Nine point game, you get a bucket and a stop, and that's how you get back into a ball game in increments. It's a single digit yeah, game. Exactly. This is not over yet. St. John's has really continued to stick around. They down low, wide open, layup. And just a mistake defensively from the Huskies underneath. Poor and Gina Oriema wants a timeout. Yeah, really poor communication defensively from the Huskies here. And St. John's is taking advantage of it. And they've gotten out and run. And they're continuing to be aggressive, playing with nothing to lose. And you've got to love the intensity on the floor right now. Scoring run for St. John's getting back in it. Another Mayo here and doing it all over the floor. Just tremendous. Benaya Mayo has been the, the reason why this team has really gone on this scoring run. You love the assertiveness, the aggressiveness from St. John's. They really took advantage of a miscommunication that last possession defensively from UConn. So they have really kept this thing close. It's UConn ball out of the Huskies called timeout. Mule and Beckers on the floor together. What Edwards rejected. That's good defense right there, because that's who I anticipate is going to see a lot of touches here. This is the closest it's been since it was 27-21. That was back in the second quarter. That's several stops in a row for St. John's. Lob taken away by Edwards. Running with Mule. Fake. Strong. Fouled. And she has a chance to enjoy a career day as she got hit by Drake. That'll be her first. Now they're going to foul you, foul hard, and that was certainly a pretty hard foul, but good defense from Aliyah Edwards. That's where it's a live ball turnover. You just don't want to make those poor decisions right at the top of the arc there for an easy bucket. First free throw in and out. She's one point off her career high. She set in the NCAA tournament against Vermont last year. Hits heel, rebound, Beckers, UConn ball. Wow, that, that's one you wish you could get back for St. John's. Great job by Beckers. Off the Edwards screen, Swish. Talk about redeeming the play, John. That's Paige Beckers for you. Good job with the extra possession. Tracking down that O board. Under eight minutes. Beckers has been a little outshined by Edwards, but she's had a terrific game, 17 points. Mayo. Off the jab step. Oh, no. Arnold's got it. They spread the floor so well. Edwards, long two. Off target, Beckers again. Look at that, long shot, long board, and who's there? And the same play, this time she gets fouled. Those are some of the little things that Beckers does well. She's really good at tracking down rebounds and getting those extra possessions. That time she gets to the free throw line because of it. That's, that's a big foul, Jules. That's four on Mayo. What do you do? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that Coach Charmel is going to take her out for a little bit here, but you can't leave her out for very long. How much can you afford to not have her dribble penetration skills on the floor? Not long. I'm, I'm thinking you, you're trying to leave her out for maybe five minute. The five minute mark is that possible? You know, UConn can go on huge runs in a matter of 
one or two minutes. But he's going to take her out here. He's going to probably do it as long as he can. Get her back in the five minute mark. Owen takes her spot and brings the ball up. Yule continues to guard Drake and deny. She's face guarding. Describe that. What does that mean? Yeah, when you face guard someone, you, you don't even look to help off of them. You're all over her. Edwards to Mule. Edwards wants it down low. She's got a mismatch against the 5 10 day. That's the way to calm your offense here. Just pull it out. Becker's off the bounce. Becker's really taking over here. That's four on day. Paige Beckers has been very aggressive. See, quick first step. Nobody there to help her. The one on one defense for Tara Day just not able to laterally stay with Beckers. She's so smooth, has such a long stride. 22, part of a 7-0 UConn run. And here comes Mayo back in. To your point, Jules, she was only on the bench for, what, 30 seconds? Yeah, not even what I thought. <laughs> I thought maybe he'd keep her out for a minute or two, but even that felt long to him. I mean, you're down 14, you got six and a half, and you got to score against UConn in a compressed span of time. She's just got to be careful. Drake contested, got it, tough shot. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if Drake could have had, you know, even half of what she's usually putting up numbers-wise, they'd be potentially winning here. And she can be that explosive. Beckers. Rim glass miss. Mayo remains aggressive. Drake overplay Mule. Nice behind-the-back move. Calls the play. Donald leaving screen for Drake. Buell fights through. Six to shoot. Drake three to shoot. Foul! Uh, that's happened a couple times here. Mule, I think Fallon are here. You defend for entire possession. And then Unique Drake puts it up here from the corner, and then the foul takes place over here. Nice job relocating, and that's where the foul is. Newell just gets a It's a big foul there, too. Because if and when, if they were to find a way to get Newell out of the game altogether, how could that alter Drake's presence and impact scoring? I think the, you, can, you can see it here. She's slowly starting to heat up and gain a little confidence and as soon as Mule would come out of the game I think she would probably have even more confidence John to be able to put some numbers up I don't think anyone can defend her quite as well as Mule. UConn up 10. Beckers has been the calming offensive force these last few possessions. Edwards. It's another jumper miss. There's the foul concern on each side. Razor's edge for significant players on each side. Needing help. Archer. Taken away by Mule. Four on two. Lob to Beckers. Behind the head. Edwards got hit. That'll be three on Donald. What a pretty pass try. Yeah, it really was. I mean, this is where UConn just makes it look so nice. I mean, up in transition, great job, good pass ahead, and the behind the back little fancy. You got to love that. Aaliyah Edwards, of course, running the floor, that opposite side, always getting up the floor. They have a post presence that can really get up and down. Well, the foul goes to Mayo, and she is fouled out. I thought it was going to go to Donald. And that's the risk you take when you leave her in the game with four, but 
I don't think Coach Tarvell had a lot of choice there. And well, I think there's confusion here. They may go back to look at it. I thought the foul was on five, Donald. Right. But they called it on 23 Mayo, which would be for fifth. Yeah, let's take a look here. I think they did too, John. Was, I didn't see Mayo anywhere around the play. And they're, it looks like they're changing the foul yeah. to Donald and getting it right. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right there. So that means Mayo remains in the game. Now Edwards trying to match her career high, enjoyed in the big dance last year. 28. And it could be free throws that salt things for UConn. They now are 16 of 20 as a team at the line. That's one thing they've done for years is shot the ball well from the free throw line. And when you come down to a free throw shooting contest with them, it is so tough to win. UConn showing a different defense here. No, no they're still in man to man here. You know, and G GR Emma told us that he doesn't go outside of that too much. You know, he kind of wishes he could because teams don't really know how to play offense as well against the zone. They don't see it as often, so it's nice to throw it in as a wrinkle, but he has kept things a little more basic for a younger group this year. Now to Edwards, only two on the Huskies, four on St. John's. So the Huskies have bonus in their favor, rest of the quarter. Great double, Archer extra pass, Owen against the big, seven to shoot. Donald Ford to shoot, and one! Off balance into KK Arnold, she's got four, and it's a chance at a three-point play to make it a single-digit game. Wow, you've got to love the grit of this St. John's crew. And Donald getting to the rim, great body control, and absorbs that contact. They've continued to push. Donald trying to become the fourth St. John's player in double figures. She does, she's got 10. They scored much better in the second half, John. Four minutes. Becker's looking to post. Edwards, her first career 30 point game. I see, they're leaving her open there. That, that, that shot is gonna be available to her every time down the floor, because they'd rather give up that mid-range jumper, but she's making them. Drake looking for the ball, she's guarded by Beckers. Owen, off glass, Edwards, weak side. St. John's just doesn't have enough three-point prowess on this roster, but they've been able to hang here despite that. How deliberate do you go with your Utah? How do you balance just running your stuff versus maybe working a little bit of clock selectively? Yeah, I think that's the key is you don't want to take a shot that's not a good shot. You don't need to rush, but at the same time, you don't want to play that tentative way. So I think that you just run your sets. You get good shots. You don't force things. Foul to Owen, her third. That comes with just IQ. Now Beckers, who's just about automatic, glides to the line. Fourth of the Big East, 82%. Swish. What a player. Not free foul. Ashlyn Shade with her first. Now they should have utilized Mayo even more in that first half, and that's what they did second half. They've really given her the basketball and let her go downhill. And they're saying this was in the act. And I think that Gino Oriem is upset, not just at the foul call, but... He thought it was on the dribble. It's healed. With little margin for error, even single missed free throws can have grand consequence. Trying to rally from down 13 at UConn, where a few teams win, period. Yeah, you can't miss at the line against UConn. I mean, if you manufacture points at the line the way Joe Tartamella said his team needs to, they 
They can't afford even one miss when you play a team like this. See, now this feels more deliberate, right? Yeah, they're for sure. Kind of getting to 20 before they're even really running stuff. You might as well clean some of the clock and then post up Edwards just like that. Look at how deep she is in the lane here, John. <laughs> she just demands it. And Archer's had a hard time staying out of foul trouble against her. Aggressive drive, shot, a little rushed it off for Mayo. One and done, UConn ball. So on the counter side, there are so many outstanding free throw shooters for UConn. But at what point do you even begin to think about trying to foul? Because you're running out of so much time. You are. I mean, I, I don't know that they're going to do it here. There's a lot. Still some time left here to get some stops and possessions. But they're not getting stops. Now it's 16 with two minutes. How clutch has Paige been here? And a timeout. We'll step aside as well under two minutes, 77 61. For those of you tuning in for South Dakota, South Dakota State, the men's game, you'll find it streaming free on the CBS Sports app or cbsports.com slash cbssn. As soon as it tips off, of course, we'll get you out there immediately after the conclusion of this game. This is St. John's ball out of the Red Storm called timeout. Break. Contested three. No. Edwards board. Now UConn can run deliberate offense and try to trap. And now the foul comes. And it's been bonus for some time. This one's going to go on a Mayo. Yeah, I mean. So Mayo was fouled out. She played so well, though. I mean, her physicality, her ability to get downhill in the second half has been enormous. I, I think Joe Tartamello will look at this game and you know, take some real positives away from it. And she leaves with a team high 16. Arnold converts. You've been on what Beckers has brought, particularly this quarter. She's got 11 of her 26 in the fourth quarter alone. You know, what did Gino Arima tell us before the game? He wants to see her be more assertive. And when they need her, she can turn it on. It's almost like automatic. He wants her to do that the whole game, every game. Look for her shot. Really, really make it difficult. But she's just a clutch player. St. John's has not had a field goal make in almost three minutes of game time. Break. Three to shoot, floats it up, rattles in. She's now got 14. Uh, Drake had a better second half. I mean, able to knock some down when they needed it. So UConn calls timeout just for substitutions. So they'll make subs. We'll be back. So Beckers to the bench and off to an ovation on the horizon for UConn. They'll host Seton Hall at the Excel Center on Wednesday. And then a week from today, it'll be number one South Carolina. Gamecocks enter today 20-0. They hosted Ole Miss, a game that got underway just before ours. They have won 92-95. Incredible. I mean, for UConn to, to beat South Carolina, that would be enormous for them. They've been so unstoppable. Don Staley's crew. Donald for three. Rebound to Samuels. Enish Bettencourt getting her first minute as part of the subs, along with Amari DeBerry. A sellout crowd over 10,000 strong. And UConn can dribble out the clock from a 2 0 deficit in the game's infancy to reasonable distance most of the way. Two coaches with respect and admiration for one another. 
As the final horn hits and UConn wins it, 78-63. Not the blowout of the first meeting, but still a convincing win. Yeah, a convincing win. UConn played well enough to really give it to them in the second half, but good fight from St. John's. For Julianne Biani and our entire crew, I'm John Sadak. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network. After the break, South Dakota, South Dakota State.